This is a sermon this morning that I'm going to really enjoy preaching. And I am preaching it first and foremost to please my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't know if I have ever in all my years of preaching dedicated a message to anybody. But I am dedicating this message. Uh, now, hear me. I'm preaching it for the Lord. But I'm dedicating this message to Brother Roger Eunice. Because when I was growing up as a young preacher and listening to him, there's hardly anybody I could ever hear any better than this man sitting here today. Lift up the name of Jesus. And if God would give me the breath, that's what we're fixing to do. We've been preaching this entire series on the devil, and I'm glad it's over. And now we're going to exalt the one that deserves to be praised. I hope you'll get in there with me today. I'm, I'm not one of, I don't think amens make you spiritual. And I, I think a lot of people that holler in church holler at home, except they're cussing. And um, I don't, anything. But listen, if you're going to amen something today, today's the day to do it, okay? So I want you to take your Bible and turn to the book of Philippians. I want you to turn to the book of Philippians, chapter 2. And let's stand together. Philippians, chapter 2. We're going to begin reading at verse number 9 and read down to verse number 11. Philippians, chapter 2. Verse number 9. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I'm going to preach to you a few minutes this morning with the Lord's help. A message by this title, The Last Man Standing. And one day you're going to look out through that entire universe and there's only going to be one man left standing. And that's the man, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the man we're going to brag on today. That's the man we're going to exalt. That's the man we're going to build up. And uh, hopefully... Uh, I'll do it halfway justice because he deserves to be praised and lifted up this morning. Amen. 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 All right, let's bow our head and let's uh, close our eyes. Brother Noah, pray for this message, if you would, please, and we can all be seated. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Years ago, back in the 80s, that's not too long for me, but for some of you, you weren't even born then. There was a movie came out called The Last Man Standing. And obviously it had to do with fighting and who was going to be the winner of the battle. That's what it means when you hear people talk about the last man st standing. They're referring to a fight or a battle. And the winner, the sole survivor of the battle, being the last man standing. Well, let me tell you something this morning, and listen to me very carefully. Jesus Christ won't throw a punch, but one day, bless God, he'll be the last man standing. And 700 years before he ever came to this earth, Isaiah 45, 23, prophesied and told you about what's going to happen out on out in the future. He, the Bible says, I have sworn by myself the word is going out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall swear. There's coming a day when all will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's going to be the last man standing because everybody else is going to be bowing. Glory to God. In that day, this promise of the Lord will come to pass, and I just want to take a little bit of time and talk to you about that and lift up the name of Jesus this morning. I have three points from this passage. 
You'll see Christ exalted in verse number 9. You'll see Christ worshipped in verse number 10. And you'll see Jesus Christ confessed in verse number 11. Now I want you to notice verse number 9, that Jesus Christ is exalted. God has highly exalted his son. Notice what it says there in the first part of that verse. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him. Yes, he has. Jesus is ruling on high right now at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Waiting to come back. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 4 says, talking about Christ being made so much better than the angels. As he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Yes, he has. He's wonderful. He's great. Listen, Jesus Christ is God's son, but he's God. He should be highly exalted. I want you to think about some things as we talk about, and this is talking about when he's going to come back at the second advent. For us, the, the coming is going to be, we're going to meet him in the sky at the rapture, but he's coming back at the end of the uh, tribulation period at the second advent. But I want you to understand something. The first time Jesus Christ came, he came as a lowly servant. But when he comes back, he's coming back as the King of kings and Lord of lords. The first time he came, he came, he wore a crown of thorns for me and for you. But the Bible says in the book of Revelation, when he comes back, he'll be coming back with many crowns. The first time he came, he rode in on an ass. But he's coming back on a brilliant white horse. The first time he came, his eyes were full of blood. His blood. But the Bible says when he comes back, there'll be as flames of fire as he comes back in his vengeance. Listen, the first time he came, he was a lamb of God. The second time he comes, he's going to be the lion of the tribe of Judah. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first time he came, his robe was stained with his blood. But the next time he comes, he'll be in white vesture stained with the blood of his enemies. You understand? God has highly exalted him. You can't exalt Jesus Christ enough. He's not exalted enough. God has exalted his son and God has exalted his name. Look there in the last part of verse number 9. Wherefore God has also has highly exalted him and given him a name. Notice this church which is above every name. He has been given a name above every name. Listen to me this morning. Jesus' name is above the name of every Nobel Prize winner that's ever existed. Jesus Christ's name is above the name of all presidents that's ever lived. Every king, every nobleman, every dictator... His name is above all the movie stars, any professional singer. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings, not Elvis. I've heard them say, well, Elvis is the King of Rock, and Michael Jackson is the King of Pop. No, um, Elvis was the King of Dope. Michael Jackson was the King of Pedophilia. They're not the King of Nothing, by the way, now they're dead. It would have wasted life. And all some of you can talk about it. Now, don't you talk about Elvis like that. He can sing how great thou art better than anybody. How great thou art. How great thou art. Big, biggest thinking hypocrite as there ever was. I ain't got no use for anybody putting out gospel albums and rock and roll albums at the same time. Fornicating and doing drugs and then talking about how great Jesus is. Does that hurt your feelings? God has highly exalted his name. His name is above every movie star, every professional singer. In glory, worldly names mean nothing. Do you realize that? All the names that we think are big names here on the earth, in heaven they mean absolutely nothing to God. Nothing to God. They're less than nothing. His name is above every name of every pope that's burning in hell right now. His name is above the name of Einstein, Donald Trump, Taylor Swift, 
that's selling out more concerts than anybody in the world. She's nothing compared to him. I know, I know you're not going to like some of this. You don't mind me lifting up God, lifting up Jesus Christ. You just don't want me tearing down your gods. You see, I can't lift them up high like I ought to unless I tear down some of yours. And I'm going to do a good job at it today. Bless God, if I get breath to do, preach 20 more minutes, I'm going to try to tear down every God of the world and lift up the only God of the universe. Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. <coughs> His name is above any of the names like the Rockefellers, Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, and any sodomite that's been promoted in the last 20 years by CBS, NBC, or ABC. His name is above all names, and he is to be, he's worthy to be promoted, worthy to be praised. And we see that Christ is exalted in verse number 9. And then I want you to notice in verse number 10 that Jesus Christ is worshipped. Notice that one day Jesus Christ is going to be revered. Um, reverence is an act or gesture of respect like a bow. It's going to be worshipped by all. Everybody's going to bow to him. Notice what it says here in verse number 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. It's going to happen. Every knee is going to bow at the name of Jesus. You know what it says about Jesus' name? Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus Christ that you can be saved. He's the only one that you can call out to save your soul and will do it. You see, he is the last man standing. Because one day he's going to be exalted above all men. And one day he's going to be worshipped. And no one else is. It's, it, it's an amazing, I don't want to keep bringing back up something I just preached a while ago, how much worship all these, all these stars and these people with brilliant minds and brilliant careers and these ball players, and, and our young people think more about these ball players and rock stars than they do the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we get to heaven one day, all of them are going down, and Christ is going up. He's lifted up high above all these people. That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination unto God. Listen, listen. I've heard other preachers say it, and it's absolutely true. If you turn on that TV or turn on that computer or turn on that radio or whatever, and the world is excited about somebody and the world is promoting somebody and the world is happy about somebody, I guarantee you God ain't. God's against them. And they're against our Savior and what I want to do today, in order for me to put up Jesus real high, i got to put down everybody real low. That includes me, you, all of us. And one day I'll gladly bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, because I've already bowed to him on the earth. And it'll be a pleasure to bow to him again. The Bible says, as you begin to look at that verse, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Where? Of things in heaven. Things in earth and things under the earth. Every knee is going to bow in heaven. All the angels, all the saints, all the heavenly creation and creatures, all the host of heaven is going to bow down to Jesus Christ. And it says in earth, every knee will bow on earth. Every atheistic professor, every doctor trying to tell you that uh, there's... Uh, Scientists that there's no such thing as the Lord and no such thing as God and Jesus Christ was just a man and he died as a man and he stayed dead. They're going to bow down. They're going to acknowledge that he's the King of kings and Lord of lords. Every Buddhist, every Mormon, and every Baptist. Did you hear me? Every Baptist, every king, every president, every millionaire, every pauper, every Muhammad, Everyone, Muhammad, Buddha, Darwin, Karl Marx, Richard Dawkins, Hitler. Every knee will bow under the earth, it says. All the demons of hell are going to bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. Every rapist will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. Every child molester, every devil worshiper. And finally, the devil himself 
will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. Charlie Manson, bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. Anton Levain, bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. They're all bowing. Joe Biden, bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. Kamala, Kamala, whatever her name is, bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. The entire Republican leaders of this country will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. All the Democrats will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. All the independents will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your atheist neighbor, bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your infidel a co-worker will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, there's coming a time out in the future when you look through the millions of miles of whatever all is out there and nobody will be standing but the Lord Jesus Christ. And all creation will bow down to Him. Bless His holy name. Bless His holy name. Every knee is going to bow to Christ. And in that day, Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and Savior, will be the last man standing. Everyone and everything bows to him. Every tough man is going to be kneeling. I like that verse over in Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 13. The Bible says, And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, honor, glory, and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Everybody's going to acknowledge who he is. Christian, let me ask you this. You're, you're saved here this morning. Maybe all of you, maybe most of you. If you're lost, I'll speak to you in a moment, but we, most of you are saved. You put your faith and trust in Christ. You know him as your Lord and Savior. So you've bowed your knee, knee and you've believed on him and confessed him. Well, what about when you get to the judgment seat of Christ? You see, we, we start out standing, but then we wind up bowing. You know... It's not enough to say he's our Lord with our mouth. How we live. One day we're going to stand before. Listen, it's not just all these lost people and all this humanity I'm talking about. It's me and you. We're going to bow down. And we're going to say he's king of kings and lord of lords. You say, well, I'll gladly do that. Yeah, but let me ask you something. Is our life going to match that profession? I'm not talking about salvation. I'm not trying to get you to doubt you. I'm not talking about none of that. I'm talking about reward at the judgment seat of Christ. Wouldn't it be a shame to say, I'll gladly bow down to him. I'll gladly bow the knee and say he's the king of kings and lord of lords. Yeah, but will you gladly live like it right now? Will you gladly live like it before you ever get up there? That's the question. Christ will be exalted. Christ will be worshipped. And finally, Christ will be confessed. Notice there in verse number 11 that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's going to be that you glorify the Father in heaven when you brag on His Son. You can't make God any happier than when you're bragging on the one in whom He's well pleased. When you lift up the Savior, you're lifting up God. And you never make God any happier than when you praise the name of Jesus Christ. And that's what we ought to do in this church here this morning. Lift up, up his name. Christ will be confessed. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Do you realize there's coming a day when there will be no more atheists? No more agnostics? You see, an atheist just says, well, there is no God. The Bible says he's a fool. And the agnostic says, well, you don't, I just don't know. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Not, not enough evidence. I just don't know. Listen, in that day, the agnostic will be fully persuaded there is a God. 
as he bows down before him, as she bows down before him, fully persuaded. I like what uh, Romans chapter 14, Romans chapter 14 and verse number 11 says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. You know what's going to happen? There is coming a day when every knee, every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And here's, here's the sad part of it. For us that are saved, it's going to be a very joyful time, isn't it? I'm looking forward to bowing down to him. I'll drop right now, brother. I'll bury my face right now. But you see, when you confess him twice, you go to heaven. You confess him once, he puts you in hell. Then in the lake of fire forever. You see, I've already, amen. You see, I've already confessed them now, Brother Roger, on the earth. I've already believed on them. I've already made them my Savior. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I've already made them my Savior. And so I'm gladly going to confess to Him again one day that you are God Almighty. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. But listen to me. If there's someone here this morning that you haven't confessed him, you haven't believed on him, you haven't trusted him. See, you don't get to do it twice. You'll just do it once. That'll be after you die, after you stand before God. But then when you kneel down and bow, you know what you'll be agreeing to? See, when I confess him now, when I confess him now, I'm agreeing that he is my king, he is my Lord, and he is my Savior. But if you don't do that on earth and you die without Christ, when you bow in that day, you won't be confessing that he's your Savior. You'll be bowing and confessing and agreeing with him that he's your judge, that he's your God. And that day when you bow, you will just be agreeing that the hellfire he's going to put you in, you have solely, completely earned it. Because you rejected the Son of God. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everyone will be a believer in that day. And in that day, God will get the glory. And in that day, as all creation confesses that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords, it'll be right. It'll be just like it's supposed to be. But I want you to understand something, folks. God is not going to share his glory with nobody. And every idol we put up, he is going to tear down. Isn't that something to think about a time coming out there in the future? All these powerful people of humanity, the angels... The sons of God, the whoever's flying around out there in the UFOs, the cherubims, the seraphims, the heavenly elders and creatures up in heaven, all the people, all the host, the devil. The devils of hell, the unclean spirits, all the righteous, all the wicked. There will be no categories. Everybody will be in the same category. They will bow down to the lordship of Jesus Christ. And for us, it's to be gladly walking to heaven and gladly be conformed to completely now into his image having a mind and a body like Christ to serve him forever and for the lost to be dragged off 
kicking and screaming to an eternal torment that they have richly earned and deserved. And in the perishing of the wicked and the salvation of the righteous, vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor, in that day Jesus Christ will be magnified and exalted and lifted up. One day when Jesus is the last man standing, will you be bound for the first turn? <coughs> Excuse me. Is there someone here this morning you're lost? You've never been saved. You've never trusted Christ. That's going to be a very awful day for you. You know, it's amazing how something, how somebody can interpret something or enjoy something so differently. In that day, Brother Mark, for me and you, now we might, me and you may not never be the best Christians in the world, but that's still going to be a good day for us, ain't it? And all these things that Miss Sarah and Miss Darby's wanting us to change about us, they'll be changed. Amen. We'll, fi we'll finally be made complete. We'll, they'll finally appreciate us, I guess. Maybe. You know. And you think about that, you think about what a good day that's going to be and how, hallelujah, we, we're never going to worry. Like that old gospel song, I won't have to worry anymore. Never going to fret, never going to have any more troubles, never any problems. And we'll just be up there, just like we're charged into thousands, whatever, just up all the time, just praising the Savior. But then over here is a very different, a very different reaction is going to take place to those bowing, to the last man standing. Uh, it's going to be a day of great sorrow, a day of great fear, a day of great terror, a day of great agony. And boy, you're going to wish, you're going to wish, boy, if I just had 10 more seconds of life, if I just could go back, if I just could go back, oh God, I'd believe on you. Did it be too late in that day? Isn't it amazing, Brother Matt, how two different, very different reactions you're going to get? But it doesn't matter what your reaction is. It's not going to stop the fact that Jesus Christ will be exalted, will be worshipped, will be confessed by all creation. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess things above the earth, on the earth, under the earth, up in heaven, wherever. Everybody will confess in that day that Jesus Christ is Lord. One day, there will be a supreme victor that's the son of God exalted knelt before by all and confessed as Lord he will be the sole victor he will be the last man standing every head bow and eye closed